welcome to this second Sunday of, of January of 2021, the day that we remember and celebrate uh, baptism, especially looking at the Lord's uh, baptism and remembering our own baptism. So welcome to the worship services of Osage and St. Ansgar United Methodist Church. Come, come into the presence of the Lord. Come with all the joys and sorrows and hopes and dreams and cares. Come um, being fashioned by God's love. You are called across the waters of creation to a blessing. Come, come to worship. God who watches over us, offering us light and hope, be with us this day as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. Help us to remember your healing, cleansing, and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the waters be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us again with your love, and we open our hearts to you this day. Amen. A reading from Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Testament reading is from Mark chapter 1 verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. 
He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today we come to remember the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to remember our own baptism. Whether you're a long-term church member or you are a new to the, to the faith, most folks have heard of the word baptism. Baptism is associated with a special church ritual for, for babies uh, soon after they are born. Sometimes it can be a teenager or adult, though. There is much about baptism that is worth thinking about. And we follow certain procedures to prepare uh, for baptism. There are conversations with the pastor, a date is set when the family and the friends can be present at the service. There can even be sponsors selected. There's a conversation about the meaning of baptism. On the day of the baptism, there is, there is an air of excitement. And during the service, the parents of the baby are frequently nervous that their child will be, the no be too noisy during the baptism. Sponsors are proud who have been asked to be a part of the service. The grandparents are proud and they take hundreds of pictures after the service. And of course, there is the baby who is the center of attention, whether asleep or awake, whether quiet or screaming. Important words and promises are said during the baptismal service. Do you resist um, evil and injustice and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you, will you uh, be true to this child and, and bring this child up in the Christian faith? Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? And you will say, we do. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we welcome you into the Lord's family. There are also significant actions that are part of the baptismal, baptism. The splashing of water. The lighting of a candle. And the promises that are made. Not even the loud crying of a baby can mar this event. You would think this is how the Bible would have described Jesus' baptism. As important as baptism is, as important as Jesus is, you would think that his baptism would have been rich with religious um, ceremony. However, Mark uh, devotes only a about three short verses to this. Uh, no mention about the words said or the promises made. No mention about sponsors. No mention about other things. No baptismal candle. Only a vision and a voice. The vision was opening the heavens. But wait, there's no mention of golden beams of light zeroing down on Jesus. There was only the appearance of a bird, a simple dove at that. And then the voice, you are my, my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Of course, John the Baptist did not have the book of worship to use to, at Jesus' baptism, nor was Jesus dressed in a white robe that had been worn by his parents and at their baptism. But when all is said and done, that dove and that voice tell the real story of what baptism is all about. A vision and a voice. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open up and God's spirit descend upon him like a dove. 
The only time in the entire Bible that God's Spirit is identified with a dove is the baptism of Jesus. Yet for over 2,000 years, the descending dove has been the church's most widely used symbol of God's Holy Spirit. That tells us something about the importance of its appearance at Jesus' baptism. This was, a, this was a, a vision of God's very own presence. It was a vision of God's Spirit. The dove's appearance says in no uncertain terms that God's Spirit was right there in the midst of this event. The, lit the liturgy uh, does not call for the use of, of live doves as, as a, in baptism, but maybe we could. But what is important is that God's Spirit is equally present at, uh, as parents and sponsors and family members and the church gather around the baptismal fount. Baptism is far more than a nice religious ritual we conduct for children. It is an occasion when God's Spirit is right here among us. Baptism is called a sacrament. A sacrament is described as a visible sign of God's invisible grace and love. A visible sign. Whether it is a baby who is presented by parents and sponsors, or whether it is adults who are presenting themselves to be baptized, the living God is in the middle of the people gathered for that baptism. How do we know? Because God has promised to be here, just like God was present at Jesus' baptism. Then there's a voice. The, word, the words of the voice echoes the Old Testament servant song of Isaiah 42, which told of the mission and the purpose of the life of the one for whom they were, were spoken. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. It is no easy task to bring forth justice in the world or to work for an end to human suffering or to bring peace where there is hatred and discord. And yet that is a mission which is laid upon every person who was washed in the water of baptism. Justice does not happen naturally. Peace is elusive when the conflict of human wills are involved. Human suffering is easier to ignore because of the painfulness of it. But those who are, are the arena, uh, in the arena of life which Jesus was sent, and because of our baptism, those are the arenas of life to which we are sent to do. Something about them, something about the suffering, something, something about the injustice, something about the evil. We are to bring about healing, reconciliation, and change. We are to bring an end to injustice and oppression. We are to care for the hungry and the homeless. We are to work to make peace a reality. It takes special power from, from God to do such a thing. It takes a, a voice that throws us back to that vision for the power. The vision is the power of God's own spirit. We're not left to our own devices to do justice for God. We are given the power of God, which comes from the Spirit of God. We are good enough for that task. Are we capable enough for that task? Has God given us a mission that is, is beyond us? Listen to the voice again. You are my son. You are my daughter with you with whom I am well pleased. I find that astonishing. God is saying that God accepts us just the way we are at a time when we are small, helpless, and crying, at a time when we can't even say God's name, at a time when we don't even know any theologic theology about God. Once more, God tells us that, that, that once the waters of baptism have flown over, have been, been spilled over our head, it's good for life. What magnificent graciousness for God to make such a promise to us at the start before we even have the chance to botch things up. 
Unfortunately, this is where Christians begin to, to quibble among themselves. Some say that we've got to be old enough to understand what we're, we're doing before the promise can be even given to us. Others say that we can, can lose, uh, lose a promise if we don't uh, stay on the straight, straight and narrow. Folks, such arguments put the focus in the wrong place. I'm convinced that when, when we come face to face with a love that accepts us the way we are, with no strings whatsoever attached, we cannot help but respond with a kind of gratitude which uh, seeks to accomplish the mission in which God has called us, the gracious God has called us and wants us to do. You are my son, you are my daughter with whom I am pleased. Baptism, baptism is not some kind of magic spell or death insurance policy that we take out uh, on little children. But baptism is about life because baptism is an entrance into the life of Jesus Christ and into the life of the Christ church. Whether we are baptized as infants or as an adult, in baptism we are may, may, may marked as, a, as belonging to God. We baptize young children not because we are afraid of children will die. We baptize them because we want them to live in the company of God's people where they grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. This morning I have asked you to remember the vision and the voice of Jesus' baptism because it is the same voice that was present at your baptism. Or will be present at the day when you will be baptized. Always remember the words and actions which are part of the day to remember. Remember this. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this person that the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and the spirit of counsel might be the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Remember your baptism. Children of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus Christ. Remember that. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember who you are and who you belong to. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Creator God, when everything first began, water became a symbol of refreshing of, of washing away, of renewing. Through the waters of creation you brought forth abundant life. We gather this day to remember Jesus' baptism. How when he came up out of the water, the Spirit proclaimed that he was your beloved Son, in whom you were very well pleased. Our spirits resound with that proclamation. In his baptism, Jesus' ministry was initiated. He dedicated his life to, your completely, to you completely and without reservation. Help us to dedicate our lives to you, to offer our best for you, to be of service to you by serving in your world. We now take time to lift before you the names of people near and dear to us who need your healing touch and your tender mercies. We also lift up to you ourselves, also in need of your grace. We lift to you our country and our world in the midst of strife, in the midst of um, separations that are wide and deep in this country. We lift up to you uh, the events of this past week that, um, that are so painful for our country. We lift up to you Wars and oppression and famine and hunger and alienation and situations in which we have abused the world and each other. Heal us and heal this world, Lord. Renew us with your life-giving waters and reaffirming our baptism as your children. Let us go forth to be the people of peace and mercy. We pray all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, in, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of redemption and new life, we focus once more this day on the greatest gift you ever given, and that is Jesus, our Savior. As he was baptized by John in the Jordan, we were able to share in his baptism, receive the promise of sharing in God's resurrection. As we leave a painful year behind and look with hope to the new year ahead, help us to live and give of ourselves as those who knew every day what a great gift we have been given. May it move us to give our whole selves more freely. In the name of, of, of the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Has claimed, has claimed your life. By your baptism, you have been marked as God's own forever. In grace, may God watch over you. In strength, may you go forth from this service. Go now in peace. Amen. God has claimed, has claimed your life. By your baptism, you have been marked as God's own forever. In grace, may God watch over you. In strength, may you go forth from this service. Go now in peace. Amen.